This is Reed Daly's Come Follow Me podcast. In this podcast series, lesson and scripture audio are combined for a hands-free experience. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is kindly granting permission to use the audio content heard in this podcast. We express our gratitude for their generosity. At the end of this podcast, you can hear our full disclosure statement or read it on readdaily.live. Ideas for Family Scripture Study and Family Home Evening As you read the scriptures with your family, the Spirit can help you know what principles to emphasize and discuss in order to meet the needs of your family. Here are some suggestions. 1 Corinthians 15, 29 Else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead, if the dead rise not at all? Why are they then baptized for the dead? We learn from verse 29 that ancient saints participated in baptisms for the dead, just as we do in the church today. How are we doing as a family in preparing the names of our ancestors for temple ordinances? See also Baptisms for the Dead. Gospel Topics, topics.lds.org. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 35-54 through 54. But some man will say, How are the dead raised up, and with what body do they come? Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bare grain, it may chance of wheat, or of some other grain. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. What objects or pictures could you show to help your family understand some of the terms Paul used to describe how mortal bodies are different from resurrected bodies? For instance, to demonstrate the difference between corruptible and incorruptible, see verses 52 through 54, you could show metal that has rusted, such as iron and metal that doesn't rust, such as stainless steel. Or you could contrast something weak with something powerful. See verse 43.
1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 55-57 through 57. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. A discussion about these verses can be especially meaningful if your family knows someone who has passed away. Family members could bear testimony of how Jesus Christ takes away the sting of death. Verse 56. Elder Paul V. Johnson's message, And There Shall Be No More Death, in the Ensigner Liahona, May 2016, could be a good addition to your discussion. 1 Corinthians 16.13 Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong. To help your family members relate to this verse, you could draw a circle on the ground and instruct a family member to stand fast inside it while blindfolded as others try to remove him or her from the circle. What difference does it make when the family member in the circle is not blindfolded and can watch? What can we do to stand strong in our lives when we are tempted to make bad choices? Improving personal study. Look for patterns. In the scriptures, we find patterns that show how the Lord does His work. What patterns do you find in 1 Corinthians 14 that help us understand how to teach and edify one another? See also Doctrine and Covenants section 50 verses 13 through 23. Thank you for listening to Read Daily's Come Follow Me podcast. Please share this podcast with family members and friends who can find us on readdaily.live or their favorite podcast application. The Intellectual Property Department of The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is kindly granting permission to use the audio content heard in this podcast. We express our gratitude for their generosity Along with granting permission, they ask that we make the following statement. Any products offered by ReadDaily.Live are neither made, provided, approved, nor endorsed by Intellectual Reserve, Inc. or The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Any content or opinions expressed, implied, or included with any goods or services offered by ReadDaily.Live are solely those of Howard Patrick Holman and not those of Intellectual Reserve, Inc. or The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints.